Hi! Recap Chaos here! Today we are going to watch a mysterious and thought-provoking Chinese science fiction fantasy movie named Super Me. Spoilers ahead! Watch out and take care! The film opens with a boy named Yu traveling on a train when suddenly the lights go off and a terrifying shadow attacks him, hitting him with the train's floor. As Yu wakes up, we realize that it was just a nightmare, but a disturbing one where the shadow killed him. Here we get to know that Yu is a struggling writer with no inspiration, few connections, and low earnings. He's taken loans from various sources and is constantly worried about his financial situation. He has a crush on a girl named Hua who works at a cafe. Yu confides in his friend about his insomnia, a condition that keeps him from sleeping. Whenever he tries to sleep, the same shadow appears in his dreams and kills him, causing him to wake up immediately. This scares him and adds to his distress. Yu tells his friend that he has sought advice from multiple doctors, but none of them have been able to help with his insomnia. His friend urges him to focus on completing a task within a week, but Yu struggles to do so. As he is unable to pay rent for his rented house, he is evicted and forced to find a job. He starts working in a cafe and uses his laptop there. One day, while working, he feels drowsy and the shadow from his dream reappears, killing him. When he wakes up, he is desperate and contemplates suicide. Yu climbs up a building, intending to end his life to avoid experiencing the nightmare again. However, an elderly man appears and saves him. The man offers him food, and Yu, who was hungry, gratefully accepts. It turns out that the man is the same person from whom Yu purchases pancakes. Yu starts to eat the food given by the old man, indicating that he was hungry. Yu confides in the old man about his problems, who advises him not to panic when he sees the shadow in his dream. Instead, the old man tells him to remind himself that it is just a dream and he will overcome it. As Yu leaves, he sees Hua, the girl he likes, but she transforms into the shadow and stabs him with a sword. Remembering the old man's advice, Yu repeats, I am dreaming, and wakes up. To his surprise, the sword is in his hand, and he is shocked by the realization that he was dreaming. Determined to learn to distinguish between dreams and reality, Yu discovers that the sword is unique and valuable. He sells it at an antique shop, earning a lot of money in return. With his newfound wealth, he can afford good food and stays in a luxurious hotel. He even buys a new laptop for himself. Yu feels like he's living a life of luxury now that he can bring things from his dreams into reality. He thinks to himself that since he was able to bring the sword and axe from his dreams into the real world, he must have the power to do it with other things as well. With this newfound power, he decides to make a plan to improve his circumstances. Yu decides that he will go to sleep that night with the intention of bringing something valuable from his dream into the real world. He plans to sell whatever he brings back and gradually improve his life. However, that same shadow appears again in his dream, attacking him with an antique axe. Despite the danger, Yu is able to bring the axe back with him into the real world and sell it at the antique store for a significant amount of money. After experiencing the success of his previous attempts, Yu becomes more confident and optimistic about his ability to bring items from his dreams into the real world. He believes that his dreams are now a source of strength, not weakness. To further his ability, he purchases a book with pictures of a museum and studies the antique items depicted in it, with the intention of bringing the most valuable item into the real world. That night, Yu falls asleep and dreams of the museum. He successfully brings a valuable antique vase into the real world and sells it for a large sum of money. He is ecstatic and feels like his life has completely turned around. However, just as he begins to feel like he has finally found success and happiness, the shadow once again appears in his dream and kills him. After waking up, Yu takes a pill and goes back to sleep. This time, when the shadow attacks him, he manages to grab some ancient items and brings them back to the real world. When he tries to sell them to the antique store again, a gangster notices his activities and starts questioning him. Yu remains silent and leaves without giving any answers. After a few days, Yu's friend approaches him, expressing his desire to join in his newfound wealth, but Yu doesn't respond. Meanwhile, Hua is selling her cafe due to financial difficulties. Yu decides to purchase it from her, and they have a conversation. Yu has changed significantly since his fortune changed, he dresses sharply and takes better care of himself. 
One day, while visiting the old man from whom he purchased pancakes, you secretly leaves a bag in his shop. There was a huge amount of money in that bag, which made the old man very happy. You began dreaming every day, and from those dreams, he acquired expensive possessions. This turned out to be a profitable venture for him as he eventually became a millionaire and could now even afford to battle his shadow in his dreams. Yu's friends noticed his newfound success and suggested that he build a massive tower taller than the Burj Khalifa to house the poor, knowing that he had a good heart. Yu agreed that it was a great idea. That night, Yu dreamt of the shadow he had encountered previously, wearing a gold belt. When Yu touched it, his hand started burning, but he continued to hold on to it until he arrived home. As he removed the belt, the shadow left marks on Yu's chest with his fingers, which he ignored. However, the next night, Yu was stabbed in the chest with a sword at the exact spot where the shadow had marked him. Despite this, Yu continued to dream of building the tower. As Yu looked out from the rooftop, he saw the shadow's face for the first time. It was his own face, marked with the same marks that the shadow had given him before. More marks appeared on his face as he walked down the road lost in thought. Suddenly, some of the gangster's associates appeared and kidnapped him. They demanded that he give them $10 million, which he managed to convey through his friend. But when the gangster received the money, he also took Yu's friend hostage. The gangster and his associates arrived at Yu's house and threatened to kill everyone. Yu's friend fought back but was killed, and Yu was stabbed in the back with a knife, leaving him injured. Hua also became injured in the attack. As Yu became weaker, the gangsters continued to kick him in the chest. Finally, he became faint and drifted into his dreams. He catches a glimpse of the shadow and a series of old memories flash before him. In front of him appears a glass wall, and on the other side, he sees Hua. Yu tries to break the glass, but to no avail. Suddenly, he transforms into the same creature that had visited him in his dreams, the shadow. He gains immense strength and shatters the glass, barging through to the other side. Yu eliminates all the gangsters with a gun, but before they die, they shoot Hua. She sustains a bullet wound to her arm, and sadly, she doesn't survive. The shadow moves ahead, and we see the real Yu lying unconscious on the floor. The shadow aims and shoots him, causing all the antique things to disappear. The scene shifts to the store where Yu regains consciousness, still holding the sword in his hand. He realizes that he must have had a long dream, which could be a result of his illness. But how did the sword come into his possession? As he ponders, Hua approaches him and takes him away. After Hua offers you a job at her cafe, he happily accepts and finally achieves financial stability. He also returns to his passion for scriptwriting, and his work starts selling well. One day, the old man you had given the bag to returns it to him, confessing that he knew everything and had risked his own life to protect the money. This revelation leaves you in a state of shock and questioning the line between reality and dreams. In the final scene of the movie, we see you sitting in the store when Hua joins him. The shadow, which had been present in his dreams, also appears, watching them both, which means that the shadow is in real life too. The movie concludes with the audience left to ponder what the shadow's intentions might be. Comment down your views on why the shadow is still having an eye on them.